Hello, my name is Jupiter Hadley, and I'm going to be talking about some of my all-time favorite creations from the past Proc Jams. As you probably know by now, Proc Jam is a very relaxed jam that allows you to create a variety of things. Twitter bots, games, graphics, patterns, basically anything that has generation. There are a ton of entries uh, for the Proc Jam each year, and I have the honor of playing and checking out all of them. I'm always surprised and blown away by the types of things that are created for this jam. Uh, before checking out the Proc Jam, I didn't really know much about procedural generation and all of its possibilities. It always seemed like a daunting task, but through Proc Jam I've been able to see lots and lots of implementations of procedural generation and just generation in general. That's really opened up my mind to what it can add to a game. Um, so today I'm going to share seven past entries uh, that hopefully will inspire you and show what you can create using procedural random generation. I chose these entries because they covered a load of different ways that you could use generation. They were things that I remembered from past years and they really stuck out to me. Uh, the first entry I want to talk about is from the Proc Jam 2016. It's a game called Acre 6. Uh, Acre 6 is a relaxing exploration game that has you moving a dot around a procedurally generated map. These maps have different buildings, structures, and plants all around. You are able to run into these different objects, resulting in them animating before moving on to the next area. This may trigger a bubble around the area, telling you of the adventure you've had there. You can end up buying stuff, finding things, trading different items, meeting people, and somehow gaining XP and conquering quests. There are many generative elements to this game, from the maps themselves to the, world, to the words that appear on the screen. Having these different little blurbs of what has to happen at various locations adds a lot to the game, though sometimes it doesn't quite make sense. It adds character and imagination to the map around you. The simplistic but super clear graphics the simplistic but super clean graphic style of Acre 6 also stood out a lot for me. I really enjoyed exploring the maps and somehow progressing based on these seemingly random things that happened to me, and even leveling up. Um, though this game, again, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense what's going on. It's, it's just really, really interesting to see what generative words come up, what different combinations of things where you're exploring this sleek looking map that's ever changing depending on where you go. It all, it all adds up to like almost an adventure, even though the adventure doesn't quite make sense, even though the quests aren't explained, even though there's no information or anything. It's still captivating in its own right. And seeing procedural generation used for words is something I really enjoy. I wish procedural generative words happened more. I wished that they made sense almost and flowed. These are small words, small phrases that just have like an item and what you're doing with it or just a person. And I think it works very well. Um, it makes sense, but it's also different in a way. Another game I very much like is called Ocean Tribes. Uh, it has a generative map as well. This map shows off different islands, some conquered by tribes, others needing, others needing to be colonized. The different islands all have generative names. You must colonize very, various islands before building on them. You can then build a variety of different things that will help your island's defenses, help them improve their knowledge, and make them stronger fighters. These buildings do take a while to build, so you'll need to take turns with the other AI enemies on screen. Eventually, you can build a boat which you can sail to another island to colonize or invade. If you invade a new island, you can watch your warriors and enemy warriors face off to the death. Uh, this game is rough around the edges, uh, but just a touch. But it sucks me in for hours each time I play because I get really obsessed with discovering the whole map. Only part of the map is shown to you at first, and as you explore out, you get to see more and more islands and get to take more turns and conquer more things. Um, one thing that sticks out to me for Ocean Tribes isn't necessarily a generative thing, but the AI that's in the game, though the developer, like, says that it's quite rough, it's interesting watching them float around to different islands, seeing what they do to each other and then to you. It's interesting to see when they attack you, and it's quite nice seeing how close together they are once you reveal the map and then sort of targeting them and destroying them all. This game is turn-based, so it does take a lot of turns before stuff will build, but once you get the hang of it and once you really get into it and you have lots of different islands to manage and to build different things on, Ocean Tribes really it keeps you engaged, it keeps you interested in the game, and it gives you the time to sort of watch your colony grow and expand and then fight to the death. It has a really cute animation. Cute's not the right word because everyone's fighting. A really cool animation uh, where they fight each other, and it's just... It is really well done and really well put together. I would really like um, to see the different clothing. Like, if I was to add more to this game, I'd like to see the different clothing of the tribes uh, to be generative in some way, some generative patterns, so that the enemies that I'm fighting each time I play the game, they somehow have procedural generation in them. 
I think that having procedural generation in clothing is such a great idea and um, it can lead to a lot of patterns and a lot of cool designs that would look really nice on different tribes and on things that you were up against. Uh, but Ocean Tribes as it is stands as a very good game. It's really well made and it's quite fun to play. But games, games are only a small part of the proc jam. There's tons of other things entered in this jam because it's not a game jam. It's uh, create something that creates something jam. And it's really relaxed on what it allows in. Um, but there's one more game that I'm going to be talking about. It's a bit different than the video games that I've mentioned thus far. Uh, it's a print and play game. So uh, physical games are much harder to distribute. And um, they're not as popular to play online as like online games obviously because you have to print them out and do them yourself but there have been a handful of print play games entered in the proc jam and some even entered in the proc jam zine seeds um the one i'm going to talk about today is called dungeon star dungeon star has generate generation not done by a computer but instead done by the player who are looking to enjoy the game um, and with a bit of luck in the case of which cards get chosen. So there are a bunch of room cards that can be placed randomly or connected based on where the doors are. You have a limited number of health and ammo in this dungeon crawler, and there are a few cards placed in each room. So first you lay out all of your room cards um, face down, and then you can flip them over and see which ones are there randomly, or you can lay them down based on the first one you get and connecting it to where the door opens to the next one to make a more realistic room. But you're basically doing the generation in this as opposed to a computer or to an AI doing it. And I think that's really neat that having the, the player take part in the process of what the jam's challenging you to do, it's a nice idea. Um, but as mentioned, there are also health and ammo cards in this dungeon crawler, and a few cards are placed in each room. These cards are either items or enemies, which must be resolved before you move on to the next room. To win, you must clear out all of the rooms without dying. So you'd put, like, two face-down cards in each room, and then you would go against, your player character would go against the first room, flipping over the cards. If it's an item, you keep it. If it's an enemy, you have to try to kill it. You can kill it by rolling a, a d6, so a six-sided dice higher than the enemy's health. Um, ammo, you have a limited amount at the start, counts as a plus one to your dice roll, which can really help you out. Um, this is like a super simple concept, but the cards and the rules, that are, uh, the card designs and the rules around them are very complete, very well thought out, and they fit with this jam quite well. Um, you can also play this game as a single person, um, which is great when it comes to not having friends at your house to play physical games. I think that board games and print and play games are really cool. It's really nice to see um, not just computer games entered in a jam, and it's really nice to see print and play games as well. Um, this game jam takes place on Itch, as you probably know, so it's welcome to have um, print and play games. Itch has a small collection of print and play games that I do check out from time to time, and it's great that you can add some with this sort of aspect of generation in it. Um, on the graphical side of things, I really love the entry Frankenstein. This is a Java library for procedural generation for the procedural generation of monster images for games. So they make assets basically. Um, so it uses a set of pre-drawn parts. This comes complete with some pre-made monster parts that you can generate into your own little monster, or you can just design your own. Um, you do need to put descriptions in the library as well as details on how your parts should go together, but then Frankenstein will put them together for you. Um, the monster parts that are already in the library are really nice and easy to use, but if you're looking to use some other art packs um, provided by Proc Jam or ones that you found online or, you know, create your own monster parts, um, this tool can help you create your own procedurally generated or randomly generated monster. I believe they're procedurally generated, um, procedurally generated monsters. Um, so it's pretty interesting to see what this um, library spits out. There are a lot of choices that it makes on your behalf uh, currently, like color. It'll only give monsters arms that are the right color to match with the monster's body. So all of the monsters come out looking really nice and professional, and it's just a, a great tool that you can use to create some different things for your game, some different assets that are unique in their own right. And I like the idea of designing my own bits, though I'm not quite artistically... <laughs> capable of doing that. I like the idea that I can just create my own limbs and eyes and ears and bodies and then it'll make me a monster myself. And I love the fact that its name is Frankenstein because 
you know, Frankenstein was who created Frankenstein's monster, which was just a, a jumble of all of these different parts. So it's it's cool that these sort of tools are made for the jam. There are, have been quite a few other tools that have been made, um, stuff that builds buildings and that makes maps, and that just helps you get used to procedural generation. And having these tools made in a game jam and shared with other people, it's quite nice to see. Now, some people create Twitter bots um, for this jam. So if you didn't know, Twitter is a social media network that's quite popular. And Twitter bots are these like accounts, basically, that create content and push it out onto Twitter. Um, there have been a bunch of amazing bots entered in Proc Jam over the years, um, from bots that are narrating an adventure that they're going on and pulling images off the Internet to go along with it, to bots that just create these beautiful graphics and then put them on... Um, their timeline and tweet them out to their audience that are following them. Um, my current favorite bot is the at bot underscore ideas, which creates cute little gardens and like rooms almost and conversations between animals, all using emojis and pushes them onto Twitter. Um, so this Twitter bot puts out little cubes of emojis most of the time around themes. Uh, for example, Halloween was really recently. It designed rooms that were full of monsters and Halloween themed emojis and name them accordingly. So it's got a bunch of different names for what kind of room this is. Um, but it also puts out small stories between emojis and conversations that are going on. So it might be two emojis talking back and forth to each other. It's just a delightful little bot that keeps uh, tweeting out into the void, sharing its own little creations and stories to the world. I find that bots break up my timeline. They're charmful in a way that humans aren't. Uh, not all of the time uh, what they're saying makes sense. But they, they're they kind of quirky and they're kind of cute. And sometimes they just make beautiful images that I really enjoy seeing, um, even if they don't have much point to them. They add a little life and smile to my Twitter feed. Um, and the idea of creating a bot, I didn't know you could really make these sorts of things. And I didn't know um, before learning about the Proc Jam just the amount of bots and the variety. There are two bots that are currently made for the Proc Jam, I believe, one puts out questions into the void in Twitter, and the other one answers those questions. And most of the time, the questions don't quite make sense, and the answers don't quite make sense, but there's just something really lovely about that interaction, even, between these two things on the Internet. Um, just, it, it's really amazing to see Twitter bots made and to sort of get to follow them and have them brighten up your timeline from time to time. Um, they're a really nice addition to Twitter, especially when so much negativity is on there, to have constant streams of positivity. It's just welcomed, and it's great. There are a couple of, um, not quite games, um, but sort of games. Uh, maybe a better category for these two would be digital toys, but they're just things that were created for the Proc Jam that I enjoy. The first one's called Flower That You Love. Um, flower that you love, uh, it's a quirky, sassy toy where you basically have a flower that, of course, you love, and the game takes it away from you. And you can then play around with the game to find a new favorite, to pick out your previous favorite, or even have a party with your favorite plants. Um, all of these plants are procedurally generated, making some really lovely creations. Procedurally generated flowers, they're a go-to when it comes to procedural generation. There are quite a few entries that have some of these amazing flowers or have gardens that you can create or have you going through environments that are beautiful and lush and made with lots of procedural generated parts. Um, this one sticks out to me because of the sarcasm that the game gives you as you engage with the flowers. I really like games that are... I don't know, sort of in your face. And this is a game that is kind of in your face. It's a short experience, but it's really great. And the flowers that are procedurally generated look really interesting and wonderful. And at one point, it gives you a whole screen full of flowers that look very, very similar. But seeing all of the minute details that have been generated between them all, it's just interesting to me. Um, flowers are always a go-to if you're looking for something to easily procedurally generate um, graphically that will look correct because flowers, they're almost like procedurally generated when you look at them in real life. They're all just a bit different, a bit um, unique in some way. So generating them is, is easy to do, I suppose, uh, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, the Bracelet Stand is another not-quite game. Uh, it's been a long-time favorite of mine. It has you creating bracelets with your own typed-up words. You can write whatever you want on the page, things that you love, things that hurt you, what's on your mind, and the game will turn it into a beautiful bracelet that will then be on your bracelet stand. Um, the concept behind Bracelet Stand is simple, but it's so beautiful and it's so well done. 
and I enjoy typing away my secrets into this web page and just seeing something beautiful come from it. Um, the amount of uh, bracelets you get, it's like one bracelet per time that you type through, but it's just really lovely. It's just a really lovely little thing that was created. It's so unique in what it's used for. So those are a few things that you can do with generation. Um, you can generate loads of different entries. Hopefully um, some of these past entries have inspired you. Um, there's tons of past entries you can check out. I've done compilation video series of most of them that are submitted by the deadline, though this jam does extend outside the gen deadline. So if you have an idea now and you want to continue with it, you should. There's way more that you could do, though, than these examples that I've picked. You could generate styles for people in your game, generate cultures around tribe members, generate words that can be read by people and enjoyed. Someone mentioned creating a book of poems that were all generated, and someone has also made generative patterns that they've then sewn into um, those hoops. Like, I don't know what they're called, those sewing hoops. What are those sewing hoops called? Someone's even created patterns that they've then embroidered into um, hoops and have made designs with. You could create backgrounds and wallpapers. You could generate witches' brews or dark forests to explore. When it comes to generation, there's so many possibilities. There's so much to explore and so much to do. Um, it may seem like a daunting task, but you're already here exploring the idea of generation through the Proc Jam. And the Proc Jam not only has all of this inspiration, it has tons of assets and tutorials and ways to get you started. It has talks like this one that are to help you along and to inspire you and some ones that are more technical to give you some more deep guides to where to go. Um, the Proc Jam is a really lovely jam and I'm so happy to be a part of it. I can't wait to see what's made this year and to see all of the lovely things that are created along with it. Um, not just games, but everything. Graphics, assets, tools, um, patterns, literally everything. Literally everything. I can't wait. If you're still looking for inspiration and these different projects haven't inspired you enough, I'd check out the Proc Jam hashtag on Twitter if I were you. Check out all of the gifts that are being made, all of the conversations that are happening around what can and can't be achieved in procedural generation. It's much more than something that just adds content to your game. It can be used in a variety of ways that are just all unique and all wonderful. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching my talk on YouTube since these talks aren't live. Hopefully it was coherent and not just a rambling of different games and stuff that I like. But Proc Jam is one of the better jams that I get to take part in. And I really enjoy seeing the big variety of different things that come out from this jam. And I can't wait to see what you do, whether you get it done for this Proc Jam or next Proc Jam or submit it to the Seed Zine next year. I'm just happy to see all of these different uses and this many good things coming from a really awesome jam. Thank you. Bye.